Update on the Junker Drag Truck. Guys, if you follow us on social media, you know. If you don't, you don't. So I'm gonna fill you in on the details. Josh believes big singles are life. And I started buying into the hype. So I put a 476 single on the Junker with a 13 mil pump. Now, before this, I had the compound turbos on there that I've had forever. Some old raggedy hole sets that just made power. I think my best pull was 1100 horsepower to the tire on the Junker. So I put this 476 single on there with the 13 mil pump to see what it do. And after two minutes of spooling on the dyno, it finally kind of halfway came up and little would you know, the coolant was puking everywhere. All the rings were scored, all the bores, all the blow by, and I ruined the motor in one dyno pull. Seven hundred and fifty, seven hundred and sixty horsepower. Something so pathetic, I didn't even report it to you guys. So big singles are not life when you have a junker drag truck. Compounds for the win. So, anyways, the engine came out. So junker's been sitting in the parking lot. I've been thinking, what do I want to do with this thing? It's just a beat up, raggedy truck. Well, lo and behold, we realized that the Junker is a really good test vehicle for us. It's easy to work on. You can scratch it, you can dent it, you can cut holes in the hood. Um, it's low because it's tool drive and it's a little lowered. It's really easy to swap turbos on for dyno testing. It has a built tranny and it's just, it's just really convenient to do crap. So I was like, let's build an engine that we can throw pretty much anything at it. Well, power, baby. Follow along as I build this engine and get the junker back into service where it belongs as a dyno mule.
All right, the Junker drag truck has always been my personal test mule. I love testing and trying new things on it. So for the Junker, I added a, one of our high flow oil tubes and one of our high flow 8.3 Cummins based oil pumps. Um, part of this is I wanna see, you know, if there's some cavitation that happens at high RPM on a 5.9 12 valve block, cause they have a little smaller oil feed than the common rails. So I actually drilled and tapped a vacuum port on the suction side before the oil pump so I could see where that is. Well, I didn't think about that till after I had assembled the bottom end. So we stuffed a rag down in the oil pickup tube, drilled through with a couple paper towels in there, a little bit of magnet action, and uh, you know what? The oil fielder will catch whatever's left over. Don't worry, it's a junker. Every time I do stuff half right on it, it seems to work well. So for whatever reason, it's a glutton for punishment, likes being ripped on. Um, on the bottom end, we had a leftover Gorilla Girdle from some engine of Todd's from years ago. So I was like, shoot, might as well throw that on there. So threw the Gorilla Girdle on there. I torqued it. I don't even know what the torque spec is. I just sent it to 175 foot pounds because, I mean, they're 14 millimeter mains. I mean, they should handle whatever I torque it to. So we sent it there. Um, i trying to think what else we did unique on this. We have some new uh, oversized billet oil squirters. I don't know if we got any footage of that, but you know, we're just playing with a lot of different little things on this engine to see, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a test mule. And like I said, that's why we test some stuff, but hopefully you guys can follow along and learn some of the R&D process we do here. Sometimes we release a new product and people think just overnight you threw something together and it's out there. No, it takes a lot of testing and and fitting and fiddling and measuring to, uh, to get a finished product that we're confident to sell to the general public. One other thing I've been wanting to test on the Junker is oil pressure stability. We noticed in the past when I shimmed the oil relief valve on the Junker, when it had cold oil, it hit like 120 PSI with a 5.9 pump. So on the new version of the Junker, I took my extra springs out, run a factory spring, but I was nervous that the factory uh, oil pressure relief valve didn't flow enough. So I threw that sucker in the lathe and I bored that out. I think I went 150 thousandths bigger, interrupted cut, didn't care, just sent it in there and uh, did a little custom mods with the Dremel, you know, got in there, did a little grinding to, uh, you know, kind of a little port and polish on the oil side. Also in the bottom, I don't know if any footage of it, but we also had to open up the return in the block because 12 valve blocks don't have as big of an oil return as the 5.9 and 6.7 blocks. So I kind of matched, gasket matched the size of that. Like I said, just lots of little things we're playing with all at once to try to just get more data so that when I release a, you know, a blueprint, so to speak, on how to build a reliable, you know, 1500 horsepower 12 valve with a factory block, that uh, we'll kind of have all those little details for you guys kind of documented in here.
the next update on this, we should have the engine completed and it should be time for some turbo fabrication. Thanks guys. Remember to like, subscribe and follow our channel. And uh, if you're new here, hang around. We do lots of fun stuff, a wide variety of stuff from tow trucks to race trucks to testing turbos to, to whatever. Thanks.